Hi, I'm Matt Hanson, I'm Senior Computing Editor at Tech Radar. And I'm Matt Phillips, Tech Radar's video producer. And with lockdown seemingly going on forever and everybody needing to work from home even more, we thought it'd be a good idea to come on camera and chat to you about what we think or what Tech Radar thinks are the best laptops you can buy right now. So let's just kick it off. I think we're going to go through sure. the top five. We're going to go through the top five. Obviously, on Tech Radar, there's a hell of a lot more of these. There's full reviews of all of these as well, and all the links will be in the description if you're interested. Um, but in at number five, and I was relatively <laughs> surprised to see this in here. It's the MacBook Pro 16-inch that came out in 2019, right at the tail end of 2019 in December. So, Matt, why why is this one number five on your list? I would put this in number five because I think this is the best laptop that Apple has ever made. I was very pleasantly surprised with it. It comes with some of the latest Intel uh, processors. It's got um, some very powerful, uh, discreet uh, graphics cards. And this, I mean, straight away, you have to say the MacBook Pro 16 inch is not for everyone because it's a very expensive laptop yeah obviously it's aimed mainly at um yeah professionals um certainly professionals who use a lot of very intensive graphical um, applications like 3d renderers video editors but they're all put together in a very very nice package it is the classic MacBook design which i think a lot of, there's a lot of people who love it some people who find it a bit dull but i i, I like it. I, it looks great it's for such a powerful laptop it's very thin but the two key things are the bigger screen it's now got a 16 inch screen rather than a 15 inch screen um, and that extra real estate means that um, you can have more lips open and you can sort of if you're a if you're a video editor working 4K files, it gives you a bit more room there. And that increase in screen size hasn't made the actual laptop itself much bigger because what Apple have done is slimmed down the bezels around the screen. So it's not actually much bigger than the 15-inch MacBook Pro, which it replaces. Right. It's just the screen has been enlarged. So that's really nice. Um, it's got some fantastic speakers, some of the best speakers I've, I've heard in a laptop. And best of all, from my point of view, is that it comes with a new keyboard. Previous MacBook Pros came with uh, Apple's Butterfly keyboard, which were quite famous for having quite a few issues with them. I never experienced that myself, but I just didn't like the feel of it. I just felt it was a bit too shallow. You pressed the key, and it wasn't um, that satisfying click that I quite like. But that's changed with the Magic Keyboard, which is included in the MacBook Pro 6-inch. And so um, it's a really lovely keyboard to type on now. So for those Fantastic. reasons, that's what we put in number, number five. I, yeah. I think it's a genuinely excellent laptop. Yeah, and I think it's worth mentioning as well, you know, you quickly touched on it, the, the studio speakers as well come accompanied with the studio microphone and, and in our sort of testing yeah. for that, those were both fantastic um, and sort of really appealing, like you say, to those creatives out there, those content creators who are looking for that sort of all-in-one solution. You know, potentially you could quite happily shoot a video uh, similar to how we are now, you know, but, but on that yeah. on that MacBook and, and get really great results. So I think that's really interesting. Yeah, like the, um, yeah, they've worked quite a bit on the microphone so that um, the speakers don't sort of create a vibration. So, yeah, the idea is that you could take it out and not have to include a separate microphone. Yeah, exactly. I don't think the webcams, the webcams still a bit lacking, but apart everything else, yeah, like the speakers mean you don't you don't necessarily have to set up external speakers or monitors if you sure. want to sort of do a bit of work whilst on the go, and it works yeah. really well. Exactly, exactly. And so from the most expensive laptop that we have on this list to number four, which is the least expensive laptop we have on this list. Look how that worked out. Uh, the best yeah. budget laptop in the world, the Acer Swift 3. So why is this on there? Why is it such an incredible value, I guess? Yeah, I think the reason why the Acer Swift 3 is on there is that creating a brilliant budget laptop is actually harder than creating a high-end laptop, I think. Sure. With a high-end laptop, you can just chuck in the very best components. You know, if money's no object, you can make it as sli slim as you want because, uh, you know, there's some great tech coming out from Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA, which allow you to sort of put ever more powerful components in a, in a slimline, expensive laptop. But when you make a budget laptop, you've really got to make sure that, as well as keeping the price low, you don't cut too 
mini corners. So you don't have poor build quality or the components within it are too underpowered because if you buy a cheap laptop that doesn't perform well, you're wasting your money, you might, you know. And so I think the Asus Swift 3 really strikes that balance really well, I think. It's it's thin, it's light, it's got some decent graphics. Um, you can get an 8th gen up to a 4i7, Intel 4i7. So, you know, it's not right. a bad little performer. Um, you can even get a discrete graphics card as the NVIDIA GeForce MX150, which isn't the most powerful graphics card in the world, but it gives a bit more power than just the integrated graphics. So you, you do a bit of a game on it as well, even. Um, right. It's got full HD screen. Um, it's got decent amount of storage. RAM, you can get up to 8 gigabytes, which I recommend, really, with a Windows 10 laptop. is sure. of thing. But, um, and, yeah, Acer, they do some good affordable laptops, and this is this is the best one, I think, on the market right now. So uh, who would you recommend this laptop for? What sort of user is it for? Obviously, it's not in the same sort of level as the yeah. MacBook Pro that we just talked about, doing sort of studio work and 3D work and that sort of thing. So what can this sort of handle, I guess? Yeah, I think this is for yeah, this is for people who want a laptop for just day-to-day -day use. So sure. browsing the internet, um, working from home, doing some um, emails, um, creating documents, work Microsoft Office or the Office, creating yeah. presentations. It's like it's a good all-rounder, really. So it's not a gaming laptop, but yeah. So so it's for everyday users, really, who want something a bit more powerful than a Chromebook because they're cheaper Chromebooks. But this has sure. Windows 10, so it gives you a bit more flexibility in that respect um so yeah so it, it's, it's for day-to-day -day use but it's dependable and enough speed that you won't be frustrated yeah exactly exactly so then coming up to number three in our list and again very surprised to see this on here because i know very little about this laptop and this brand sort of doing laptops the huawei matebook 13 and i think a lot of people probably would look over huawei as a laptop manufacturer um but this sort of sits price-wise sort of in between the two laptops we've previously discussed. So uh, so yeah. tell me about the, the MateBook 13 and Huawei's venture into laptops. Yeah. So like you say, Huawei probably isn't the first name that you think of when buying a laptop. Um, and they're then primarily, I think, associated with smartphones at the moment. Yeah. But uh, a couple of years ago, they started bringing out um, their MateBooks. And we were actually impressed with them because they are... They offer a level of performance and design um, at a price point which is much lower than its competitors. So, like you said, this is this is a bit more expensive than the um, Swift Free, but it comes with um, some more powerful um, components, a larger screen. Uh, but it's the design as well; it's very thin and light, and a lot of it takes a lot of the design cues, I think, from the MacBook. So right. it's got a similar sort of space gray design. The keyboard's quite similar, but it's quite a bit more uh, affordable than the MacBook Pro. So this will be for people who who want sort of like a, a bit more of a classy laptop, a bit something that they could take out in the meetings and out about um, without spending a huge amount. So this is it's like an ultra bar. Um, which is a class of laptops which are very powerful but very thin and light. Nice. Right. But quite, but underneath that sort of magic one thousand pounds, one thousand dollar mark, which um, a lot of them are pitched at. So yeah. it's so for people who want something with a bit more um, for a bit more style, but not spending a huge amounts of money. The thing about Huawei is though that their products aren't always easily available in a lot of markets. So in the UK, Europe, Asia, Middle East, and sort of Australia, I think they're pretty. They're pretty easy to come by. In America, um, in the US and Canada, they can sometimes be quite difficult. There's a well-publicized falling out between the US government and Huawei. Yeah. Um, but they, 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 they make solid laptops, and um, that's why um, this is it. Number three, because I think it really does sort of tie in a lot of stuff that we'd expect from more expensive laptops, but in a more affordable package. And so yeah. worth with this place. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see where they go from here sort of thing because obviously they had a product launch uh, last week as of recording this and that was very much targeted sort of around their laptops and stuff but their tablets and, and very much targeting this sort of young Chinese audience with it and then pushing that 
sort of brand and and pushing their products out globally as well they were talking about a lot of their products being available globally on that talk so it'd be interesting to see what the next iteration of this laptop looks like and, and sort of where they are in you know five years time they could be yeah they could be way higher in this list so we will see although it's not too oh, much I, not too much to go yeah, yeah not exactly. much to go. And, and i think um what i would like to see from them is move away from the apple light design you know the design is is very nice and it gives you a yeah. very familiar apple light design but I, you know it's all running but i'd like them to try something else good make their own sort of look and design and feel and you know um but you know huawei are massive in china so which means they are a massive company but like you say they really are trying to push for a global audience so yeah well it's a very exciting company to keep an eye on to see what they will do to sort of really make a big way into that top space yeah yeah it will be very interesting to see which moves us swiftly on to number two in our list a, a laptop i'm sure everybody's heard about at this point the dell xps 13. So what what sets this above the cut of the rest? The Dell XPS 13 for years has been at the top of our best laptops list. It's just a lovely bit of kit, really. It's, it's thin, light, powerful. Every year Dell um, updates it with the latest um, components. So you can now get a Dell XPS 13 with generation Intel core processors, you can get a uh, you know storage goes from 256 gigabyte up to two terabytes and an ssd um, you can have up to 16 gigabytes of ram and you can have up to 4k um resolution and 4k resolution on a 13.3 inch screen is some will say overkill but <laughs> yeah it's stunning because it's, that's it the pixel um, density is sure. incredibly high because it's spamming so many pixels into a smaller space. And it just looks lovely. It's light, it's powerful, uh, dependable. It just ticks all the boxes. It's a really, really nice bit of kit. And sort of and, where, you know, we've been discussing sort of who these laptops are for. So, so where does this fit in? What sort of creative work are you going to be able to achieve on it? Yeah, I think this is for people who really want a sort of like, who have got, it, it's an expensive laptop. Sure. Um, it's for people who just want a brilliantly performing um, laptop for for work and, and pleasure. It's not a gaming laptop again. It doesn't have uh, discrete graphics, so I would put it below the MacBook Pro 16 inch. You're not going to want to sort of um, sort of do some heavy 3D animation rendering, sure. um, but there is a lot of power here, and you know for. You know, being able to just open it up, Windows pops up, your apps pop up, you do for editing and editing, and a gorgeous 4K screen is going to mm-hmm. be lovely. And it's, it's just a, it's a laptop which will last, will last you a long time as well. I had an XPS 13, which lasted me for years and years and years. Um, Dell's um, build quality is excellent, and its support is excellent. Um, and, yeah, it's just, again, it's just a really nice... Um, and, and I've said that how the Huawei Mate 13 has a, a premium design premium looking design yep. but the xps 13 is just enough a level it is just everything about it it's just really really nice the screen is gorgeous bright vibrant um it's thin um, there's plenty of ports which is something i um, often complain about with the uh, macbook pro because the MacBook pro only has four thunderbolt three yep. uh, ports which for a professional laptop you know that's not great because you want you know photographers would want something you know a built-in um micro sd read uh, yeah and micro sd card reader for example and you know if you've got peripherals with bigger usb you know standard usbs so yeah so the the dell xps 13 itself like it's just a you know a really gorgeous premium laptop and just it's a brilliant performer lovely design and yes loads of years yeah, exactly. Like like you say, but uh, obviously it didn't top our list. Unfortunately, the top of our list in at number one is the HP Spectre X three sixty. Now, this laptop again, I know very little about. And was kind of surprised to see it up there. You know, I kind of honestly expected to see the XPS up there. So, what sets this apart from the XPS thirteen? I think you've always loved the XPS thirteen, but whilst Dell does sort of upgrade it every year. It's, you know, it's beginning, you know, we want to see something a bit new. And with the HP Spectre X3, 
360. We think this is just a really, again, a gorgeously designed laptop. It comes with 10th generation Core i7 to um, Core i5 processors. Um, it comes with a, um, 8 gigabytes and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Um, it's got a gorgeous 13.3 inch display, which is either a full HD or um, 4K. And it's um, AMO LED, right. which is just, you know, you provides stunning dynamic contrast. Uh, the color is incredibly vibrant. It's yeah. just one of the best screens we've seen on a on a laptop. And it's touch screen because the X360 it can be flipped, you can fold it and turn it into a tablet like device. You can also then, you know, put it in a tent mode where, you know, this uh, like an inverted V, so you can use yeah. it to watch media. And that just gives it a lot of versatility as well. For sure. The design is incredibly premium. It's a little bit less expensive than the XPS 13, which I think is another thing in its favor. This is, I think, you're just getting a really, really nice laptop. It's still expensive. It's yeah. still over a thousand dollars, but it is um, just a really, really well put together device. And HP, I like Dell, HP are just really well known and well trusted brand in computing. It just seems to be a combination of a lot of its um, hard work and its experience, and it's just turned into a really, really nice laptop, which you will um, be able to just carry around with you again as thin at night. And when you take it out, you know, it, it's eye catching. It's got an eye catching design um, where, you know, people will see it and go, okay, that looks, you know, tell me about that. It's, yeah. it's a really nice bit of kit. Fantastic. So so one thing I don't think we have touched on with any of these laptops, and it's probably quite important to talk about it, is battery life. So if, you, if you're looking for a laptop to sort of, you know, do some basic document work and, and you know, Gmail and all this sort of stuff, um, but you need something that can sort of last you all day out and about, wh- which one of these would you go for in that, in that sense? They've all got similar battery lives of around, I think, probably between six to nine hours battery life, yeah. depending on what you're doing. The be- best battery life is actually the MacBook Pro 16 inch out of those five. Yeah. It, I think, it, you know, it can manage up, I think, up to 10 hours, considering the um, actual the power behind it, the more powerful it is usually, the more power hungry it is, so the faster the battery goes. Sure. Um, Apple actually put the largest battery you can legally travel on an airplane on the MacBook Pro 16 inch, and that's giving it a really so you can still travel with it. Um, yeah, but you can't. Um, I bet it, it it's allowed it to have a much longer battery life. And one thing I really like about all MacBooks is that you can close the lid, come back to it in a couple of days, and there's still battery. I think it, Apple say 30 days standby. Um, with a Windows PC, often you'll close the lid, you come back in a couple of days, and the battery's gone. Yeah, so. Out of those five, the Mac Pro 16 inch has the best battery life. However, for day, if you do, if you want something with day for just day to day, document creating, emails, web browsing, the 16 inch MacBook Pro is way overkill. Yeah, of course. But if you if you want that and the best battery life, I suggest getting a Chromebook. Yeah, because Chromebooks you're then talking about you know, easily nine hours minimum, um, much longer, um, and they have just come in leaps and bounds and. If you, you'll see in our um, in our full list of best laptops, we do have a, quite a few Chromebooks in there, right. including um, the Pixelbook Go. And I've bored you about the Pixelbook Pro a couple of times because I love it. I think it's a yeah. great laptop. Um, and it's just now that it's down the top five, but it's fantastic. And it's got long enough to life. It, it lasts for ages if you just have it shut and you can open it up and carry on where you're right. where you left off. So, yeah, for battery life, for day to day tasks, we have the Chromebooks. Yeah, super interesting. And and like you said, Matt, we do have a full list. I think there are 15 in the full list on techradar.com. There are reviews for all these laptops as well. And obviously, you know, something we haven't talked about is gaming specifically. None of these laptops are really gaming laptops. Uh, but that's because we kind of felt like that could be its own video, basically, you know, top five gaming laptops. So if that's something you want to see, please do leave a comment down below and let us know. Um, as well as anything else, you know, do you want the top five high, most high-end laptops you can get and stuff like that. So um, let us know what you want in the comments down below and we'll be sure to do that video for you. Just quickly before we sign off, Matt, is there anything coming sort of in the latter half of 2020 that really is piquing your interest that you think could break it into this top five 
list? Yeah, we're always updating this list every time um, throughout the year. Companies are always releasing um, new new laptops. Yeah. So yeah, we're expecting stuff from uh, Microsoft have just announced the Surface Book Three and the Surface Go Two. Um, so we'll be getting our hands on those soon. So I'd like to see if those go in. Um, uh, there, I'm hoping that Apple do another MacBook Pro 16 inch. Um, so I'll be interested to see if there were any more. They 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 kind of surprised. They did a couple of surprise announcements of new MacBook Pros and MacBook Air um, earlier this year. So they might have a few um, more tricks up their sleeves. So that'll be interesting. Samsung have got a couple of Galaxy books out, and you know we're we're testing those at the moment to see if they're worth worth well. So. Yeah, it's a very interesting part for laptops at the moment, and I'm sure this list will continually change um, throughout throughout the year as excellent devices come out. Exactly. So thanks so much for watching the video. Um, if you enjoyed it and you want to see that full list, like I said, all the links are in the description. You can head to techradar.com. Um, if you want to see our video review that me and Matt did of the MacBook Pro 13-inch that just came out, yeah. uh, you can click somewhere on screen and, and watch that video because that was good fun chatting with you about that as well. Um, Thank you. It was lovely. Yeah, but thanks for coming on, Matt. And remember, yep, head over to techradar.com for all the latest tech news and reviews.